What's happening everybody? Hot day out here in South Florida and I thought it was time for another fun little semi-feeding slash tour of Camp Ken and I'll show you how I do it on pellet day. So uh, come on back and we're gonna go hang out and feed some animals and see what they're up to. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. All right, guys, hanging out here today. As promised, we're going to do a little bit of a tour, and I'm going to just feed off some pellets. It's pellet day. I like to do this uh, twice a week. They get some pellets, and then I also give them some natural foods uh, during the rest of the week. They can eat as much of those as they want. But I'm using the Missouri uh, crocodile diet. Watch your head coming in. And the Missouri... Uh, tortoise diet and it's really good stuff because hey look the tortoise diet is not only for tortoises and the croc diet is not only for crocodiles I'll show you what I mean here in a second we're gonna go on into Guapo and Lola's enclosure first we're gonna kind of work our way backwards now these two are gonna let me go first because these guys are gonna climb out and freak out all over the place because I got food and you see how excited they get on food day so someone's gonna jump on me watch this most likely come on Guap. come on down here Oh, well there you go, she's making room. She's made of poopies. Here we go. So they're gonna eat up their tortoise diet, and then I also like to take some of this croc chow, and this is really good for the box turtles. And I just spread this around. These Chinese box turtles love it. Um, they're gonna be walking all over the place here, and you're gonna see them eating this stuff. And I just spread it around, and their little noses sniff it out. I'm gonna make sure I save some for the monitor lizards as well. Then I have a plate of it, now come on over here, look at all these lunatics. These are all my little baby Chinese box turtles and watch this guys, these guys love to come on over here if you can sneak in. These guys tame up so nicely. They tame up so nicely at such a young age, but look at this, they'll start coming over. See, they smell it over there. I already fed out over in that enclosure, but here they are right here. Let's see if I can get them eat out of my hand. Let's see if this will work. Come on guys, come on guys, there we go. All right, see, and look at them all come. This is the coolest thing I've, I've got going on right now. I love coming in here. These guys grow pretty quickly. Um, they're very gregarious, they're very friendly. They're probably one of my favorite turtle species, the Chinese box turtle, just on how incredibly friendly they are. They'll go through all of this. There's uh, 20 of them in here, and they will eat through all this crock chow, and I like to put it on a plate because I wanna make sure that they're eating all of it. I don't like to sprinkle it in here. I wanna make sure uh, I can kind of see everybody come over and get some of it, and then I know everyone's eating, so this is how I keep track of it. These guys were um, part of that confiscation we got a few months back from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, they were going to be illegally sent to China, which is strange because they're Chinese turtles, but they were being sent back there illegally. And you can't do that without the proper paperwork. So here they all come, they start motoring on over once they figure out that the food is in their enclosure and uh, they really have no problem eating this. And the Missouri crock chow is good because it's pretty much the same as the Missouri freshwater turtle diet. Um, it just comes in a bigger pellet and it's actually easier for me to buy in bulk. And as you can see, these guys have already finished their Missouri tortoise diet and their lizards. But the iguanas that I keep and my tortoises, the grassland grazers, have very similar diets. Uh, these guys like leaves, they like the, the high fiber uh, veggies. And uh, the tortoise diet works very, very well with iguanas, whether they be spiny tails, cyclora, or the green iguana. They just really, really love it. Uh, it's just a nice, uh, cost-effective way for me to feed them. They get a lot of their nutrients that way. It's a very good pellet in my opinion. And um, the other great thing about it is you don't need to feed a lot of it. Remember, these pellets are loaded with nutrients. You don't want to overfeed it. I want to make sure that they have eaten and consumed all of it. I give them less, which is better than just feeding them more. Let's get moving and see, since I can already clean this plate up, let's see what Slinky's up to and see if he's interested in some crock chow. See, I've moistened uh, the crock chow in this particular Tupperware bin, in this little Sterilite container here. And what I like to do for Slinky is I grab it and I just kind of squeeze it and I turn it into a ball. See this? Just make a little ball 
And again, a little of this goes a long way for these guys. So there goes Slinky. He loves it. And uh, let's see if Jackie is in the mood. Her appetite seems to be getting less and less, and that's because I believe she's got some eggs inside of her. Uh, we're going to walk right over to Jackie. Let's see if she's interested in a little croc, croc chow. Hey, baby. You in the mood? Oh, yeah, she's in the mood. She's getting her appetite back. So you can see her. She really loves it. It's just a great way for me to get nutrients into them. If you can get your monitors to eat croc chow, that's a good thing. Um, so now the rest, what I like to do is I like to just throw the rest in for the fly river turtle. Slinky will get whatever he can, but I just throw a bit of this out and here comes the fly river right there. And that guy's going to eat some of this croc chow as well. So it's a, it's a good diet. It feeds a lot of different animals that I keep here at the camp. And what's fun about feeding guys when you have, um, you know, a group of animals as I do, it's a really great way to get around and see, of course, all the animals and how they're feeling, how they're behaving. Are they coming to you for food? Are they excited about it? Look at Jackie go. She's a cutie. Now, She's, do you moisten it into a clump just because uh, it's a better it, way for them to eat? Well, I moisten it into a clump because I like to, to get to know it's easier. If it's a little pellet for a big animal, they have to eat a lot of it. So I just moisten it, make a big pellet out of it because they sell the croc chow in a big nugget or they sell it in the little pellets. I have the smaller pellets. I want to get a bag of the bigger pellets because it's just easier. I can feed one or two and know that they've been adequately uh, nourished. All right, let's head on out of here and go see some of the other critters around the camp and I'll show you my little tour. Watch your head and before I go, I leave a final little few nuggets of tortoise chow for Darth Maul babies here. And they're right down here and you see how they're already begging? They're ready for their food. They're, they come begging. See this? Look at this. They come running. Isn't that amazing? Such a young age, these animals are already ready or already friendly enough and know that I'm the guy that brings them their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Look at that. I love it, man. And you can see how beautiful their eyes are. So it's a fun way to see everybody. Here's one four-wheeling right now coming on back. Come on, dude. Better hurry up. And there's one more in here. And I'm sure it's going to make it. There it is. Everyone's accounted for. You see that? And like I said, it's great to get out, make sure everyone's moving around, doing their thing. Everyone's healthy. These ones are doing very well in this setup. So I'm extremely happy uh, that they're all over here. And let's see. Come on, make a little room there, big guy. See, the big ones like to walk all over the food and kind of block everyone else from eating it. But we want to make sure everyone gets at least a couple of mouthfuls. Let's pull this out. Hey, give me that. Get, get over here. Let's pull this one out and get its attention. Come on. There you go, little buddy. Now it's on the ground, you can grab at it. Musical turtles here. Tortoises, there we go. Look at this. <laughs> Some of you have more than one tortoise know how excited they get to eat. That's the only time tortoises get moving. When they're hungry. Okay, now oh, here we go. Let's get moving. I'll get my big red bucket. And let's go. We got a little bit of a walk. We come this way, and we got some cherry heads and elongated tortoises here. So I just start throwing pellets down for them. Remember, a little of this stuff goes a long way. There they all are. Some more over here. Want to get some over here for my elongated and my mountain tortoises. He just threw it around. It's no big deal. Let's come on over here to Redfoots. Come on in. So it's the hottest part of the day. Many of these guys are going to be hiding. So I'm going to throw it kind of close to their shelter and get them their appetites peaked. And uh, also this way they can eat in the shade. But these guys come pouring out all the time. And that's it, really. Just move it around. So much fun. I don't necessarily like sweating, but uh, it's a lot of fun to sweat when you're working for your animals, man. It makes it all worth it. I suppose we should move on. Let's go over to the mountain tortoise to this way. This is kind of my little, little uh, 
routine. Watch your step on this. It can be slippy sometimes. I gotta rinse those out. But the other good thing, guys, is if you notice, it's mango season and these mangoes have been dropping and the tortoises are eating them. Uh, but even still, I like to make sure these guys have all their vitamins in the pellets here. Definitely have a lot of nutrition in there for them. So I just spread it around. And then this way, the guys and girls walk around throughout the day and they get the food they need. And they can behave like tortoises because they go ahead and graze and browse for the food. Now to my cherry heads. Watch your step when you come on over this. Oh, we got a, we got a bit of a turtle pile up. They shut their own door. Well, that's not good. Let me lock in some of them. Let's see. Let's open this up. Oh my goodness. Oh, go that way. Excuse me. I'm gonna use my foot here, pal. There you go. Yeah. Now we can get around. Throw some food here. So wait, how often are you doing this? Uh, I do this twice a week, Monday and Friday. Uh, then in the middle of the week, I like to go ahead and uh, feed him some natural foods that I'm growing. And then they're getting produce and stuff a couple times a month. Uh, and they're doing very well with that. You see how excited they get? So we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna get that little tray that's been moved over and I'm gonna be accosted by two lizards and some Greek tortoises. Here we go. Hey, how you doing, miss? Come on back down. All right, so I like to pour this stuff out. Just give them a little bit for everybody. And I clipped some hibiscus leaves the other day and I threw in the branch and, well, there you go. Come here, miss. Come on, this way. Oh boy. Let's get her. She's going for the roof. That's okay. We got her. Oh, there you go, young lady. Your food is there. Lunch is... No, no, no. The other way. Look, where you going? Come here, Alicia. She sees the red bucket. And now she sees the actual food. And these guys will figure it out, too. Come on, guys. Turn around. You all remember this lunatic, right? There's the craziest tortoise in the... Look, it does... I think it is nearsighted or something. Let's... Tortoise, tortoise that likes toes. Tortoise that loves toes. There you go. All right, I'm getting out of here. They're lunatics. They'll find the food. And again, I only put enough in that they can all eat. It's not about overfeeding them. I give them enough to be healthy. And you kind of, people ask me, you know, how do you know how much to feed my tortoise? It's kind of trial and error. You know, I have a lot of tortoises, like for example, these cherry heads, you know? I want to throw enough food in that I, it's kind of by feel, guys. I've been doing this for so long that I, I watch them. I see how much they can consume in like 10 minutes. And then I just kind of know, couple handfuls here, couple handfuls there, uh, and that's what we're doing. We got some breeding attempts going on here. He wants that young lady to relent, but that's not going to happen. Let's go get the Marginateds and Hermans fed. Lots going on here. So this isn't too bad. No, it's not bad at all. Time. No, pellet day is really good because it's easy. You know, it's literally just walking around. Throwing a few of these out. Here's one of the feet. Here's one of the males, right here. I just drop a little for him, and then just just kind of throw it around. They've got really really good noses. Tortoises, turtles and tortoises can smell very well, and so here you see they're already eating. This guy's already chomping. So when I just throw it all about, it's gonna wake them up. They're gonna come out. Again, it's the hottest part of the day, so most of the tortoises are kind of in the shade. But once they smell it, they'll venture out and they'll get some food. Here, right to your left. Check this out. There's my little male Herman's tortoise. Now something else that I might do is I see these flowers and I just chuck them. Pull them out, chuck them by the cave. That'll get their attention. Those won't last long here. And maybe a little up there. That's it. It's not bad at all, man. That's why people think, oh my gosh, it must be so much work. It's more work on days where I'm cutting up produce and stuff. But this is kind of an easy day. That's what I wanted to show you. You know, you can just kind of spread it around. These guys will eat it. It's dry also, by the way. I, I keep the larger tortoises can eat it dry. 
and therefore the sand doesn't really stick to it. So you might see me throw some on the ground, but they're not really picking up any particles of dirt on them. If they were wet, I'd feed them in a tray. Um, I also put out this hay, and so I'll sprinkle a bunch on the hay, you know, and that'll wake them all up and they're eating off the hay. But to be perfectly honest, guys, in this situation, most of the tortoises are over here, the leopard tortoises. I'm just gonna toss it near the grass tussocks where they're all hiding out. And they're gonna sniff it out and they'll eat it, no worries. It won't take long for them to wake up. And this gives them something to do in the afternoon because as you can see, they've eaten all the grass. So I want to kind of instigate them or get them into the idea of walking around and putting their noses places to find food. And that's what I do. And that's it, you can see, I really haven't put a lot out. Very important not to overfeed, I can't stress it enough. Here's some radiators, I'll just throw some out there. All this gets eaten, guys. They have good noses. Don't mind the noise, we got the pump going right now for the batting pond. Why not throw Would some? you say the overfeeding is like one of the most Over common issues that yeah. people, mistakes that people make? Overfeeding reptiles is a big deal because reptiles, you know, they have a slow metabolism and when we have them in captivity, one of the things people love to do uh, is see the move, right? So they put food in there and they go get it, they go get it. Um, they're not hunting, they're not fasting like they should. Um, in the case of tortoises, tortoises are always grazing. I've said this in so many videos. Tortoises are always grazing, but when they're eating uh, grasses and leaves, it's a very low nutrient rich food. These foods have way more uh, nutrients in them. And that means they can kind of become obese if fed too much. So I like to just supplement with this food, okay? This is just, you know, a way to supplement, get them going, and they do very well. Here we go. Come on, you gotta sniff it, and you're gonna eat it. Wow, oh, there you go. Wants to eat it right off the ground. Perfect. This is the radiated tortoises, and they're doing great. And then, as you can see, you know, in, in other videos I've shown, you know, I've got the cactus and elephant grass, and on other days when I'm doing yard work, I just take my machete out, and I throw that food down. And everyone seems to be happy. They lay eggs, the eggs are fertile. We get healthy babies, and that's the key. That's what you're looking to do. So uh, let's go give the rest of this to uh, some sulcatas, and uh, we're gonna be done. Uh, let's go on over here. I wanna show you one other thing. It's kind of interesting. They may not come up very quickly, but the, the Batiger and the Fly Rivers will eat this food as well. They don't eat the crocodile. Oh, look at this, guys. Here's a black racer. Oh, shoot. Look at that. Little visitor to Camp Kennedy. So that's what's always fun. You come out, you get to see some other animals. You gonna get him? Nope, he's gonna make it. He's up in the tree. Look at this, guys. He's going up the tree. Look at this. Here's a snake climbing. How cool is that, mm -hmm. huh? Can you see him? I don't know. I'm pointing it in here. I have no oh, idea gosh, if I can see Oh gosh, come on up it. here. He's way up here now. Look at this. Look at him go. Way up high in this cypress tree. Now he's he's crossed over. That's that sick. That's incredible, man. I've actually never seen a black racer take to the trees to avoid danger. So I just learned something exciting and new. He went right up the tree. Oh, that is so awesome. And that's the other cool thing about getting out here and feeding, man. You get a little surprise. I always have native visitors here to the camp and that's one of my happier moments is when I get to see native animals enjoying themselves out here. So awesome. Man, that black racer was great. Cool, man. Middle of the day. They're a diurnal species. You'll see them in the, at the height of day, even with that black coloration. Very active snake in during the daytime. So I'm gonna just toss some of this out now for the Batiger and the Fly River turtles in here. And so there's six turtles in here, so I like to just make sure I spread it out and give them enough to eat, wake them all up. They smell it. Even if they're at their bottom sleeping, they will start to smell it. Also, they'll hear the fish. When the fish get agitated like this from food or start into that feeding frenzy, it wakes up the turtles at the bottom because then they know, hey, wait a minute, you must be throwing food in there again. So if we sat here for a little while, we'd see some turtle heads pop up. These guys are much more shy than the turtles in the main pond, but they're still uh, becoming more and more uh, accustomed to me. So I get out here, I make sure I feed them, and it's really awesome. All right, let's go check out some sulcatas, and we'll call it a day, because it's hot. So we are in the sulcata habitat right now, uh, and guys, they're just grazing. Most of the time, I let them graze. I do this, like I said, once to twice a week with these guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go on over to this hay and I'm gonna go and pour the rest of this out and whatever tortoises are out, sniff it out like lumpies over here. 
and one of my females, uh, they'll come on out and they'll just sniff through that hay to get themselves a little bite to eat. So we got ourselves a little bit of a tour. Saw how I do the feeding with just the pellets. It's pretty simple. And uh, you know, like I said, we got mango falling down out of the tree. They're eating that every now and again. So it's a really cool smorgasbord here at Camp Cannon. Basically an excuse just to get you guys out Hang out with me. I know a lot of you love having a tour. So we did a little mini tour this episode. I hope you like it. I'm spraying the uh, camera with my saliva. And uh, I think it's time I get in and get cleaned up and go feed myself because it is lunchtime for humans as well. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennen where you guys can actually help us with the show, get an Ask Camp Kennen question read on our channel. And uh, as always, we are shipping shirts. And guess what? The shirts are now available internationally. Go to the Camp Kennen store at campkennen.com. Find out how you can get your very own Camp Kennen shirt. Thanks for supporting us. We'll see you soon. More videos to come.